Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu says more forces will be deployed on the country's western border. This includes over 300,000 troops, 8,000 tanks and 6,000 artillery systems. Shoigu says the move is meant to mirror the deployment of NATO assets near Russia's borders. According to Shoigu, NATO has increased its military deployment two and a half times since February last year. At least one person was killed by an explosion at an optics and electronics factory northeast of Russia's capital, Moscow. The incident happened yesterday. More than 45 people have sustained injuries in the blast. Russian authorities are investigating the cause of the explosion. Hundreds of opponents of Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko marched in Poland's capital, Warsaw, yesterday. The demonstration marked the third anniversary of the last presidential election. The protesters allege that Lukashenko had rigged the 2020 polls. Over 100,000 Belarusians went into exile after Lukashenko cracked down on protesters after the results. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un replaced his military's top general yesterday. Kim announced that General Ri Yong-gil is now the new commander of the military. General Ri is North Korea's former defense minister. Kim also asked other generals to prepare their units for the possibility of war. Niger's military junta met envoys from Nigeria yesterday. During the meeting, the representatives from Nigeria stressed on the need for diplomatic dialogue. They urged Niger to consider reinstating the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. After the talks, Niger accused France of violating its airspace and causing instability in the West African region. Pakistan's parliament was dissolved by President Arif Alvi yesterday. This comes after Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif advised the president to dissolve the parliament prematurely. The parliament's five-year term was set to expire on the 12th of August. Now, a caretaker government will be picked by the outgoing government and political opposition parties. The interim government will stay in power until Pakistan's national elections are held. Meanwhile, a Pakistani court has turned down an appeal by the jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan. 70-year-old Khan appealed against his conviction on corruption charges. Khan's lawyer says the case has been adjourned for an indefinite time. The former Prime Minister has been given a three-year jail term in the corruption case. He's also been banned from politics for five years. Ecuadorian presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was killed yesterday. Villavicencio was shot during a campaign rally in the South American nation's capital, Quito. Reports say at least 30 gunshots were fired at the presidential candidate. Police officials say the primary suspect was killed in a shootout. Villavicencio was a former journalist and a vocal critic of organized crime in Ecuador. He had vowed to crack down on corruption and tax evasion if elected. Italy's Red Cross says at least 41 asylum seekers died in a shipwreck in the Mediterranean Sea last week. However, during search operations, four people were rescued from the shipwreck yesterday. The survivors include three children. Italy has received over 90,000 asylum seekers this year so far. At least 11 people were killed after a fire in eastern France yesterday. The fire gutted a holiday home for the disabled. Over 17 people were evacuated safely. French President Emmanuel Macron visited the site of the burnt-down care centre. Officials say are investigating the cause of the fire. US federal agents shot and killed a man in the state of Utah on Wednesday. Officials from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, raided the man's house after he allegedly made threats against President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Officials say the shooting happened when the suspect resisted arrest. 
This comes just a day ahead of Biden's visit to Utah. Three, mem three family members died after consuming wild mushrooms near the Australian city of Melbourne. A fourth mem uh, family member also consumed the mushrooms and remains in critical condition. Police officials say they arrested the former daughter-in-law of the two of the people who were deceased. However, she was released without charges. A wildfire has torn through the heart of the Hawaiian island of Maui. At least six people have died and dozens were injured. Nearly 300 structures have been damaged or destroyed. The wildfires have forced thousands to evacuate. Some people jumped into the ocean to escape the smoke and flames. Chinese authorities have reported that 33 people died and 18 are still missing in Beijing after last week's floods. The heavy floods were due to Typhoon Doksuri. The extreme rainfall damaged nearly 35,000 houses in one of Beijing's districts, Mentogu. Officials say the disaster has caused the most severe damage in the district's history. Norway has recorded the worst flooding in 50 years. Thousands of people have been evacuated. Homes have been submerged or dragged away by landslides. Major roads were closed and train services were suspended across the country. A dam on a Norwegian river has partially collapsed. This sent water gushing through a gaping hole in the structure. Rains pounded South Korea's southern port city of Busan on Thursday. This was after Typhoon Kanun made landfall on the southern coast of the country. Over 300 flights have been cancelled and more than 10,000 people have been evacuated. In the Caribbean island of Cuba, people flocked to the beach to escape soaring heat. Temperatures rose to 40 degrees Celsius in a fierce heat wave in the region. Last month was the island nation's hottest July since 1951. The average temperature in July was 29.1 degrees Celsius. Experts say the severe weather is a result of human-driven climate change. Fishermen in the South American country of Peru have seen their holes shrink drastically in recent months. This is due to climate impacts brought by the El Nino weather pattern. Under the unusual weather conditions, the catch of seafood has fallen by more than 30%. Sea temperatures have become significantly warmer in previous, than in previous years. This has caused fish species to migrate to deeper waters far from the shore. Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, has been named the world's most polluted city. This is according to data by a Swiss air quality technology company, IQ Air. Jakarta residents have long complained about toxic air pollution. It comes from various sources, including chronic traffic, industrial smoke and coal-fired power plants. Big Pine Key, a part of the Florida Keys, is under imminent threat. This is according to the latest data from America's National Oce Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The Florida Keys are a string of tropical islands in the U.S. state of Florida. The threat to Big Pine Key comes as sea levels continue to rise at an alarming rate. There's been a staggering 8-inch increase in sea levels across along the uh, Florida coast since 1950. U.S. President Joe Biden has signed an executive order. The new order will prohibit some U.S. investments in China. This majorly covers three sectors, semiconductors and microelectronics, quantum information technologies, and certain artificial intelligence systems. The order is aimed at preventing American capital and expertise from helping China develop technologies. The U.S. says these technologies could support China's military modernization and undermine America's national security. Meanwhile, China will require all mobile app providers in the country to file their business details with the government. The country's information ministry has said that apps without proper filings will be punished after a grace period. The grace period ends in March next year. 
Experts say the move will potentially restrict the number of apps and hit small developers hard. WeWork's share prices were near zero on Wednesday. This was after the co-working space provider warned that it could go bankrupt. The SoftBank-backed company has been in turmoil ever since its plans to go public in 2019 imploded. Meanwhile, the CEO of WeWork's India office has said that the bankruptcy warning will ha not have any impact on its regional business. Tapestry, the owner of luxury brand Coach, is nearing a deal to buy Capri Holdings. This is according to reports. Capri Holdings is the parent company of brands like Michael Kors, Jimmy Choo and Versace. The report did not specify the financial details of the deal. If it goes through, the deal would be one of the largest fashion industry acquisitions in recent years. There are concerns in Washington about PayPal launching its own stablecoin. This is because of a lack of federal framework of a federal framework to regulate digital assets. Earlier this week, PayPal became the first fintech giant to embrace digital currencies for payments and transfers. The company launched its US dollar stablecoin called PayPal USD. South Korean gaming firm Crafton is planning to invest another $150 million in India. It'll do so over the next two to three years. This comes after Crafton's mobile game, Battlegrounds Mobile India, was permitted to operate in the country. The game's operations resumed after nearly a year after it was banned in 2022. Wheels Up Experience has raised substantial doubt about its ability to continue operations. Wheels Up is a company that charters planes by the hour. Earlier this year, the company took a slew of restructuring measures. This includes job cuts and management reshuffle. This comes as the demand for private jets declines after it soared during the pandemic. Space tourism company Virgin Galactic is poised to launch its first set of private space tourists. It'll be a long-awaited milestone for the company's founder, Richard Branson. This will be the company's second commercial space flight. The first flight, Galactic 01, was strictly a research mission. It was launched in June this year. The White House has launched a multi-million dollar cyber contest. This is to find and fix security flaws in the US government cyber infrastructure using artificial intelligence. This comes amid the growing use of AI by hackers for malicious purposes. In recent years, numerous US organizations, including government institutions, have been prey to hacking. Officials have also warned of future hacking threats. Meanwhile, Britain is preparing to hold a global summit on artificial intelligence later this year. It has chosen two officials to spearhead the summit. These are tech expert Matt Clifford and former senior diplomat Jonathan Black. The two will be responsible for bringing together political leaders, AI companies and experts ahead of the event. Moving to sports, the International Cricket Council has agreed to reschedule nine matches in the upcoming Cricket World Cup. This includes the much-anticipated match between rivals India and Pakistan. The game was slated to be played in India's Ahmedabad city on the 15th of October. Authorities say they will not be able to provide adequate security as the day coincided with an Indian holiday. That's why the rescheduling was requested. The match has now officially been changed to the 14th of October. Indian batter Prithvi Shaw scored a record-breaking double century in English county cricket. He scored 244 runs in 153 balls for Northam Northamptonshire in their one-day match against Somerset. Shaw broke Englishman Ollie Pope's record of 206 runs to post the highest individual score in a one-day county cricket match. 
In football, the English Premier League is investigating an alleged financial rule breach by Chelsea. The English club is reportedly under the scanner for some transactions when it was owned by Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich. Last year, Abramovich sold Chelsea after the British government froze his assets due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Reports say that during the sale, millions of dollars were sent to an undisclosed offshore entity. If found guilty, Chelsea could potentially be fined millions. There would also be likely be a point, point deductions for the club. Manchester United's former captain Harry Maguire could be headed to West Ham United. The Hammers have agreed to a deal in principle with Man United for the defender. Reports say that Maguire has agreed personal terms with West Ham. The financial details have not been disclosed. However, the deal is reportedly worth almost $38 million. This comes a month after Man United's manager, Eric Ten Hag, stripped Maguire of the captaincy. Reports say that striker Kylian Mbappe is likely to miss the season opener for his club, Paris Saint-Germain. This is amid an ongoing contract dispute between Mbappe and the Ligue 1 club. If the dispute is not resolved, it's likely that the Frenchman will miss all his games for PSG in August. PSG play their season opener against Lorient on Saturday. In tennis, world number one Carlos Alcaraz entered the round of 16 at the Canadian Masters. The tournament is being played in Canada's Toronto City. The Spaniard Alcaraz beat American Ben Shelton 6-3-7-6 in straight sets. He will now play Poland's Hubert Hurkacz on Friday. Meanwhile, Andy Murray will also, also advance at the Canadian Masters. England's Murray narrowly edged past Australia's Max Purcell. After winning the first set 7-6, Murray lost the second round 6-3. Uh, he then rallied back to win the third set 7-5. Murray will next play Italy's Janik Sinner on Friday. In the women's matchups, world number one Iga Shiontek entered the third round at Toronto. Poland Shiontek beat the Czech Republic's Karolina Pliskova 7 6 6 2 in straight sets. She will now play her next match against another Czech player, Karolina Muchova. Meanwhile, world number two Arena Sabalenka also won at the Canadian Masters. The Belarusian Sabalenka beat the Croatian Petra Martic 6 3 7 6 in straight sets. She will next play Russia's Ludmila Samsonova on Friday. In hockey, India beat Pakistan 4 0 at this year's Asian Championships. The tournament is being played in the southern Indian city of Chennai. Indian skipper Harman Freed Singh scored twice in the first half of the match. Then Jugaraj Singh and Akash Deep Singh added two more goals to seal India's victory. India will now play the semi-final against Japan tomorrow. In the world of entertainment, the Hollywood writer's strike has completed a hundred days. The strike began on May 2nd after negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and major studios reached a standstill over compensation. One of the writers' demands is the regulation of the use of artificial intelligence. They fear that AI could replace their creative inputs. Disney CEO Bob Iger has taken a diplomatic stance on the ongoing Hollywood strike as it reaches its 100th day. He said, and I quote, nothing is more important to this company than its relationships with the creative community that includes actors, writers, animators, directors, and producers. Iger added that he's personally committed to working to achieve results. The latest statement comes after Iger was criticized for saying that striking writers and actors were being unreasonable in their demands. Entertainment company Lionsgate's chief financial officer, James Barge, has revealed how the dual strikes in Hollywood are impacting the company. He said that the strikes are hurting revenue by roughly $30 million per quarter. 
Arts and television operations are the main affected areas. Baj said, and I quote, we have built in an assumption that the strike goes through the September quarter. If it goes longer, we are hopeful that things will get resolved and we are back to work in mid-fall. Pretty Little Liars star Sasha Peters has opened up about her struggles with polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. The actor revealed that when she turned 17, she gained 31 kilograms of weight and she had no explanation for it. Petries said she felt like she wasn't being heard despite visiting over 15 gynecologists. She called it a frustrating and disheartening experience. One Tree Hill star Bethany Joy Lenz has revealed that she will be releasing her memoir early next year. In the book, she will recount the spiritual abuse she faced over 10 years when she was in a cult. In a recent interview, the actor said that there's a lot to tell. Recovery looks different for everyone, depending on your experience of trauma. She added that part of her decade-long recovery process included therapy. Actor Megan Fox's book of poetry called Pretty Boys Are Poisonous is set to be released in November. In a statement, Fox said, I have spent my entire life keeping the secrets of men. My body aches from carrying the weight of their sins. She said her poems are an attempt to excise the illness that has taken root in her because of silence. Armorer Hannah Guterres Reed has pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter and evidence tampering charges. This is in the case of the accidental shooting of cinematographer uh, Helena Hutchins on the sets of the movie Rust. The prosecution's case says that the weapons supervisor acted recklessly when she loaded the gun before handing it to actor Alec Baldwin. Baldwin was holding the firearm when it shot during a rehearsal. The trial will begin on December 6th. Invest investigators in the US have revealed the real reason behind actor Robert De Niro's grandson Leon Leandro De Niro Rodriguez's death. The 19-year-old died from an accidental drug overdose. The cause of his death has been attributed to a number of drugs, including cocaine. His mother, Drena De Niro, had alleged, uh, had alleged that her son was sold fentanyl-laced pills. Canadian teen rapper Claire Hope, also known as Lil Tay, has died at the age of 15. Her family revealed that the rapper's brother, Jason Tian, has also died. In an Instagram post, the family said that the, this was entirely unexpected and has left them in shock. The incident is now under investigation. In 2018, Lil Tay gained her fan following by sharing videos on Instagram and YouTube. She had 3 million followers on Instagram. Legendary guitarist Robbie Robertson has died at the age of 80 due to an unspecified long illness. Robertson was a songwriter and frontman of the band. The Canadian artist began playing guitar at the age of 10. Robertson had written some famous songs for the band like The Weight, Up on Cripple Creek and Time to Kill.